Welcome to K-State Online. I am Mason Both, joined by Drew Galloway as we are here to kind of conclude things after K-State football wrapped up their spring practices over the weekend. They, uh, I think today was actually supposed to be the day that the, the press conferences were going to happen, but K-State made it a little bit tidier and said, let's just do it right after we end the last practice of the spring. So seemed to work out pretty well. Chris Kleiman, Avery Johnson both spoke, and we're going to get to some of the, the audio from what they had to say at their different press conferences. But, Drew, I'll just start this off with a more so generic question for you. You can take it wherever you want. Now that spring has ended for K-State, uh, what is it that you're most excited for next in the football process? Because obviously we get this little bump during the spring where we you know, have – coaches and players talking, you get some glimpses of practice, you get news on, hey, this guy's doing this. But what's next for you in terms of getting excited for the football season that starts at the end of August? Uh, I think it has to be probably the the transfer portal window opening again today. And I'm just, I'm excited to hear about the names that they're going after when visits get scheduled and all of that, uh, because it, it's hard to not, be excited about that when you look at where we are just in the college sports landscape right now that it's essentially like a second free agency window and this window is expected to be even bigger than previous springs and more talented than previous springs so i'm just excited to see kind of where that takes k-state and every team is going to have people leave and we we expect k-state to lose a handful of guys and potentially maybe somebody that they want to keep because, and that's not even me just like knowing something and not saying, that's just something that every team is going to go through is probably, they're probably going to lose one or two guys that they probably really wanted to keep. So I'm excited just to see where that goes because I mean, the, the winter window came and went and the winter window was just as fast. And now you're kind of just staring down and, we're in the, the world of we have the football transfer portal window and basketball transfer portal window open at the same time. So I, I'm excited and also kind of a little bit overwhelmed just thinking about that from our perspective. But I, I'm just excited to kind of see what position groups that K-State really wants to attack. And especially I'm excited to see what K-State wants to do first. Yeah, I mean, that's that's probably going to be the most intriguing part about the football portal, and we'll, we'll certainly talk more about that uh, over the next couple of uh, days and weeks because, I mean, you think about it, like we've talked so much about basketball and how the portal works, and K-State, for the most part, it feels like this roster is, is built in a position that they're comfortable with, but there are certainly areas that they might look to add and try to improve and at least build some more depth out. In terms of that, let's just start with the first clip from Chris Kleiman, and we'll go on the defensive side of the ball because we're going to talk a lot about offense today uh, because there were a lot of questions about the Matt wells Connor Riley situation. We obviously heard from Avery Johnson over the weekend, but Chris Kleiman praised the defensive depth with just something we've talked about quite a bit. But I think after hearing him speak over the weekend, I think this group, it may not just be as deep as we thought, but there might be a little bit more um, – uh, wow factor to the talent that's there uh, and, and might be able to provide more than just being solid. It, it might be a really strong group. We're really deep on the defensive line in general. And so, yeah, we'll find some ways to get uh, four guys on the field quite a bit. Um, the safety position's got a lot of depth right now. Um, you know, Siegel, everybody knows about. VJ was held out because of an off-season deal. Colby McAllister was held out because of an off-season deal. But uh, um, guys like Jack Fabris, that is a year into the program, program uh, Wesley Fair, Mikey Bergeron, uh, Jordan Riley, a transfer. Those guys have really stepped up and, is, and have made us uh, a lot better and a lot deeper in the, in the secondary. So a lot of talk in the secondary there. He did at one point mention – uh, some of the, the defensive end stuff as well. I mean, defensively, what, what have you heard and what have you observed to, to think that this is going to be the most intriguing group on the defense? So you can pick your position, but which one are you expecting the most from or looking forward to the most seeing once K-State kicks the season off? I think it has to be defensive ends from what we've heard. And even, uh, I mean, I, I know that D.Y. pointed this out that 
GTO VIs were kind of let it out of the bag and thought that he might get slapped on the wrist for it. But then Chris Kleiman even talked about how they want to get as many defensive ends on the field at, as they possibly can. So I'm, I'm intrigued to see that because I think that the defensive end group is probably the deepest and most talented group on the entire defense. So how are they going to be able to get all of these guys on the field? Because I, I think that they have probably five or six that you feel comfortable with playing right now. Where, whereas there are some other groups where I, I look at them and when we kind of laid out a preseason too deep, just the three of us where I'm like, Hmm, how many of those guys do I really feel comfortable with on the field right now? Yeah. So it, it, that's a position where I'm just excited because it seems to be really loaded with talent and especially in the younger classes. I mean, that, they think that they hit a grand slam in the 2023 class with all three of Ryan Davis, Jordan Allen, and Chidi Obi Iser. And that doesn't even include another young guy that is a transfer, but Travis Bates is only about to be a sophomore. So that the younger class in the defensive ends, I think, might be the best in terms of talent and depth on the entire team, even. That's uh, that's saying a lot, especially given some of the the different news and notes we've heard uh, about those guys progressing through. I think you know all along we kind of knew. Well, in, in Chidi's case, like it seems like he was the one that there was probably the most buzz about. He could give something to the team last year. Ultimately, they didn't need as much from him out there. And then Jordan Allen is the one that was highly sought after, even toward up to the end of his recruitment there where teams were really trying to get in there in case state was able to win it over. And and then, you know, Ryan Davis developing there, this K state has a strong crop and you're not going to say that you didn't need guys to come back like they got, but this is like you were saying, like this is going to be a full room of guys that deserve time on the field. And it's going to be fascinating to see how it all works itself out. Now we'll move to the offense. That's probably what everybody is most interested about. Uh, Chris Klein was asked about changes to the offense, and I think some of this is him uh, being a little bit sarcastic with his answer, but I do think there is some truth to it. So here's what Chris Klein said about changes to the offense this coming season. A lot, a lot, but we're not going to go much further than that. We're doing a lot of similar things, but a lot of different things as far as some run scheme stuff. Uh, but then in the past game, um, we're, we're doing some things to get the ball on the perimeter a little bit more um, and, and taking some shots downfield. Once again, we were down some numbers at wide receiver, but just my dialogue with uh, uh, with Riles and, and Wellesley, there's some things that uh, are going to be different that people have not seen here. So in your eyes, what does a lot of changes and a lot of differences but similar look <laughs> like to you? What What does that mean? I, I think that that means maybe even more diversity in the run game. I mean, we know that K-State ran a lot of power and duo schemes uh, with Colin Klein, but maybe they've gone even more in the run game. And from what I've heard, because I always ask uh, recruits, like, they're at practice. They don't have to be coy about what they see. So it's fun for me to ask, like, especially on the offensive side with with this change about what what they've seen and a lot of them say that case it's going really fast still so I'm, I'm interested to see how fast because maybe maybe a, a change that's a little or a lot but also the same is more pace well and it's it, it's a good thing to bring up because i don't have the audio in here i didn't think it was significant enough but chris Kleiman was asked about using the the helmet communication, which is coming to college football this season and, you know, explained, yeah, we're still getting used to it. Like there are some areas where it's beneficial, but you know, you're still going to do a lot of signaling because you're going to very rarely do you get an actual huddle. Now he's like, it's helpful to talk to the quarterback, but you're not going to be doing a lot of huddling. And I think to me, like that's, that's an indicator of this team is not going to be slowing down at all. And in some ways, like Connor Riley and Matt Wells have an idea of how they want to run an offense and the way they see it might be totally different because look, as much as Colin Klein was diverse and, and good for what K state needed and, and a little bit more new school at the end of the day, the guy learned college football by playing for Bill Snyder, you know, and 
he was no speed demon out there offensively, at least by the time that, that Colin was running things. So I think that's something to keep in mind. And we'll get into it a little bit later about, you know, some of the changes. I, don't, I can't remember if it's Avery or, or Chris Kleiman that are, alludes to it, but basically saying another one of the changes is the way that they're going to attack the passing game. So we'll get into all that. Here's the last thing that Chris Kleiman had to say, and this was about Matt Wells and his relationship with Avery Johnson as Avery Johnson in his second year gets used to a new quarterback's coach. Uh, really well. I think he and Coach Wells are a really good match. They, they have really uh, good – connection and, and do a really good job of, of communicating and uh, I sit on a decent amount of the QB meetings and, and just seeing his growth and um, seeing him take the things that we talk about in the meeting room to the grass with practice and then in the team settings it's been it's been fun to see him evolve so we know Matt Wells is uh, obviously a focal point of this offseason with all the changes that have gone on uh, what what have you made of the transition from Avery Johnson having Colin Klein as his quarterbacks coach and half of his OC now with Matt Wells coming in? What's that been like for you? I just think that he is a really fiery guy that has really hit the ground running since coming to K-State. And, and I alluded to it with him on the recruiting trail. It's It just seems like this two years of not being on the sideline for Matt Wells has kind of, I don't want to say pissed him off, but maybe like fired him up to really attack during his time at K-State. And he's a really bright offensive guy. And I mean, there's a reason that he was a head coach and a sought after head coach when he left, when he was in the process of leaving Utah state to go sex tech. I mean, He's a good coach, and I, I'm just excited to see where his uh, trajectory goes because it sounds like he's been a home run since he's been hired. So I, I'm excited to hear more about his plan for the passing game because it, it seems like he has really opened uh, k State's eyes in that perspective as well. Well, and I think that's an interesting aspect of all of this is that every step of the way, the Matt Wells hire has seemed to make a lot of sense and it seems to be getting good returns. And from the outside, it looks really good. Now that really is just left is seeing it put into practice when you get to game time uh, come the football season. Here is Avery Johnson on his relationship with Matt Wells. Uh, really good. He's, he's came in and he's, he's added some stuff to our offense to make us a little bit more explosive. And... Um, him and Coach Riley, it's just like having uh, – we have. it's like we have two OCs and, and two like minds and, and back there to be able to bounce ideas off each other. So um, I'd, I'd look at it as, as an advantage in, in, our, in my shoes. I did kind of laugh when he said it's like having two OCs because you do, in fact, have two OCs. Uh, that, that, is, that is a factual statement right here. But the relationship does seem strong there. And I think hearing – you know, talking about making the passing game more explosive – that's along the lines of you talking to recruits. That's exciting for current players to hear too, because if you're on the offense, that's what you want, especially if you're a quarterback or a wide receiver. So uh, I, it seems like this thing is probably off to a good start. And I think you you're in a position right now where like, it, I'm not saying that it's a good thing that k State doesn't have Colin Klein anymore, but I do think that you, having Matt Wells and Connor Riley run the show here and their experience at that position is obviously a lot more different than Collins. Um, I think I think this might be the right formula to do what's best for Avery Johnson and, and get the most out of him and certainly give him something that he's excited about, which is being aggressive in the passing game. Because D.Y. and I have talked about it before, but quarterbacks like to throw the football. I don't know if, if people are aware of that, but like there, there is some breaking news there. If, if Avery Johnson really want, wanted to run the ball, he could play running back, but he wants to throw the ball and he can throw the ball. So that, that's all good news. I think uh, the other thing that uh, has really kind of caught my eye is that every time that it seems like Avery Johnson is talking to the media or when he did the, the cats talk for wildcat NIL, he always brings up that it seems like they have two offensive coordinators. And he always says that uh, it seems like they have two head coaches with Matt Wells because of all of Wells's experience. So I think that that's also an underrated aspect of all of this is that Matt Wells also knows how to run a program. 
So I think that that has kind of helped the transition be easier as well. Yeah. And I mean, if we're, if we want to get into the weeds and uh, probably be technical here, they do in fact have essentially, uh, uh, you know, two head coaches since uh, Matt Wells' title is associate head coach. So they do, that. it is kind of like that in some ways. You did hear Avery there mention Connor Riley. Uh, here is him going into a little bit more detail about Connor Riley uh, taking the offensive coordinator job. Um, really just like how much he cares about uh, the offense as a whole um, and how grateful he is to be in this position because uh, he never he never goes a meeting without saying, you know, how much he cares about us and, and how grateful he is to be in front of us and, and be our offense coordinator. And a lot of guys um, not, wouldn't necessarily say that. And just, just the way he's um, – um, kind of expanded and broadened our playbook and you know like we're, we're still going to run the ball at a high level he wants to throw it at a high level as well and at the end of the day like we have a, a lot of good a lot of good pieces um, to, to be able to execute and, and our offense be really explosive um, come the fall so just a little bit there on on Connor Riley and how this is working out and I that this is another one too where we we talk a lot about Matt Wells just because he's new but Connor Riley knew in some ways because of the role he's serving. And so far from the pop tarts bowl on the returns on Connor Riley as the offensive coordinator has, they've not been negative. They've been good from everyone. And you expect it from, you know, a guy like Chris Kleiman who has that relationship, but it would be easy for Avery Johnson to not be as detailed. And as you know, I think I'm trying to think of the best adjective for it, but he never seems to have to fake what he's saying about Connor Riley. I think there's a, a true admiration there and that's a good thing to have. And I think that showcases that again, same for Wells and we won't know all this until games actually start getting played. But up until this point, it seems like things are working out for the offensive direction of K state with the coaching hires that they've made. And I mean, it just seems like if you've been around the program long enough that everybody kind of, views Connor Riley the same way that he genuinely cares about every single player on the roster and has brought some new ideas to the offense as well as Matt Wells. So, I mean, I'm, I'm excited. Uh, I'm excited for Connor Riley to kind of get this opportunity because I, I think that his offense from what it sounds like is a lot different than what I think people would expect from an offensive line coach because it, it seems like they kind of want to throw the ball all over the yard and then run the ball to win. I mean, Matt Wells said that, uh, I believe it was the, the week prior, that they want to run the ball to win but throw the ball to score. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's something that if you see, oh, well, they just promoted an offensive line coach. They're probably just going to want to run the ball 50 times a game and win that way. I don't think that that's true. I think that they're going to throw maybe a little bit more than run, but you're going to see probably more passes than I think a lot of people would expect. Yeah. Well, you can pass a lot more when you have guys that can make plays. And Avery Johnson said that there are playmakers all around him. You know, like you've seen Jason Keegan and then um, Cephas started to pick it up a lot as we got um, deeper into it. And then J Jack is a guy that's uh, overlooked a lot. Um, and then, obviously, you know, we have DJ and we have backs that are um, rotating in with DJ as well. Um, but Trey Spivey definitely showed flashes towards the end of, end of spring ball as well. But I don't think I could just say one guy. Some guys have really good days, and um, it's really just, you know, who, who wants to step up and, and, and be that playmaker. So we know that it's K-State, so receiver, <laughs> you're not going to be just loaded there. But this falls into a lot of the positions we've talked about defensively where as we stand here in the middle of April, we probably don't know who the the top guys are going to be at that position come, you know, October or November. But are you, are you confident in saying that K-State will have the right mix of three guys that they can put out there at receiver that can consistently make plays right now because – Avery Johnson just listed a handful of guys, and some are known. One's a newcomer, and another is, is a guy like Trey Spivey who got the shout-out that we only saw in a game or two last year, but people have high hopes for. Uh, first off, that was a pro's pro segue into the into the Avery Johnson clip. Uh, but I'll, I'll even be bold a little bit here and say that this is probably the deepest receiver room that K-State has had in I don't even know how long. 
because it's another position that I can I can list I mean, off probably four or five guys that I feel really comfortable with on it, the field. Is this is probably I mean the probably the deepest since anywhere in like probably the 20, 2011 to 2014 time frame. And yeah. even then you have to kind of do some math because they're subtracting with classes and certain guys like they weren't really doing things yet. I mean, not, I'm sure some can maybe even make the argument and I don't want this to sound asinine, but like this, and you could even make the argument that maybe you go back to some of like the Prince years or something there. Like it, it, it seems to be a pretty deep room. And I mean, it, it's kind of what you'd expect because this is the second year of Keegan Johnson being at K state and getting more comfortable and probably a lot more healthy than he was at any point during the season. Last year, you brought in a pretty talented transfer Dante Cephas. Jace Brown really exploded on the scene. Jaden Jackson was a touchdown machine in like the first three games last year. And then you have some younger guys that have sky high potential, like Trace Spivey and Andre Davis. And you're like, okay, well, that, that that's six guys that I just listed off that you, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw play a lot this year. So, I mean, it, it's something that to really like, hone in on and keep in mind is like we're gonna see probably more receiver rotation that means that a lot of more receivers are gonna have to play which, which means they gotta get comfortable with some of these guys coming in but i i think that i'm comfortable at least going five deep a receiver you know i can't remember the last time i said that about a k-state team so it, it's something to be excited about especially if they're gonna throw more uh down the field and just in general, because you know, you're just you need guys that can go make plays for you, and I'm excited to see what too what they do with uh, DJ Giddens in the passing game. Yeah, no, that's and we heard also earlier in the week, uh, Joe Jackson got mentioned as a guy too that had made some plays throughout practice. So they the, the weapons are there, and it, it's gonna be it's gonna be fun to see. Like I think in some ways you kind of know what you're going to get from the K-State offense and people have high expectations for it because Avery Johnson is running it. But I really think that there is an avenue where your expectations are exceeded as a K-State fan. And I'm not just talking about, you know, the person that typically thinks like me, that's an eternal pessimist. I'm, I think even the people that are optimistic about what this offense can be, I think you might get your expectations shattered, but we'll see how that ends up going. I, I don't quite want to go to the point where I think K-State has a thousand yard receiver yet because I think that there's so many guys that could make plays, but I'll say that probably two or three wide receivers and maybe one of the tight ends can get like four or 500 yards during the season. And I, I mean, I, that's more than I think that you got out of the passing game last year. Yeah. All right, let's roll on final clip here for everybody. Avery Johnson talked about his improvement as a quarterback, not just a player, but as a quarterback. And uh, I think there's some fascinating things here. Um, probably just pocket presence and accuracy. Um, big thing that I did or I did a lot previously is just kind of getting out of the pocket too early and, you know, um, just trying to work on this screen, kind of feeling stuff happen around me, um, sitting in there tall and delivering throws and just being able to, to make plays from within the pocket and then just use my God-gifted abilities whenever I am forced outside of the pocket. I think that's one of the best things and and attributes that Avery Johnson has is that he's so aware of what he can do to make them make himself better and um, like analyze it and not be you know he 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 has all the talent in the world so he could be the kind of guy that just is like I don't need to be better about you know staying in the pocket longer and all this because I have the skills to make things happen but I think it's just showing that he really wants to be known as a true quarterback and he knows to make plays as a quarterback, you have to be able to do some of these things and improve your pocket presence and your accuracy. And those are probably things that uh, if you, you know, watching his game in the pop tarts bowl, the accuracy was a problem at times, but we also know that there were moments where it was warranted to throw the ball away and do some other things. And I, I think for the most part, what we've seen of him, he's got all this. It's just about making sure that he's ready to do it consistently over the course of a 12-game regular season, and then however many games come after that uh, with like either a conference championship or bowl games or however it plays out. And he seems to be well aware of what he needs to get better on and can hyper-focus on that and, and get himself in a, in a position to be an even better quarterback than what we saw in the Pop-Tarts Bowl and uh, certainly what people expect this coming year. 
Yeah, I think that the the notion that Avery can only run and that kind of being the narrative that uh, some other fans have ran with that are, are not KSA fans, I think that that narrative has kind of pissed him off and has yeah. really pushed him to be like, look at what I can do as a passer during this offseason. And that I think that he really wants to prove that during the season this year and really prove the naysayers wrong as uh because i mean it, it's been pretty loud from one fan base this this season or this off season that avery can only run so i i, I think that that's really motivated him and driven him to get even better and i mean we saw in the pop tarts poll that his pocket presence and just his poise was far beyond his years and even what i expected a little bit because he would hang in the pocket and try and, f- and find somebody and just the poise to throw the ball away as many times as he did in the pop tarts bowl instead of forcing it was insane and very mature of him because i mean we saw jackson arnold from oklahoma literally in the next bowl game just constantly turn the ball over because he was trying to force things that weren't there. Yeah, no, that's, that's a great point. I think, I think it's going to be fun to see how the development continues. And then the next time that we get to hear from the team, what the next step in the process has been. And I, I think Avery Johnson is, is certainly keyed in on uh, how to develop. And I think he's got the right guys to help him do it. And I think the fact that we've already heard how much he seems to respect the guys that he has as his OCs, that makes it a lot easier to get better too. And I think those guys are coming from different areas. We know Matt Wells has been really good with quarterbacks in his career. And then we know Connor Riley coming from being with the offensive lineman on a daily basis. You're going to get the right balance of a guy that knows what he's doing at the position. And then Connor Riley, who has the best interest of the offense as a whole, but specifically the guys protecting the quarterback in mind. So you're going to have, Two voices, but I think voices that are telling you things that that mesh with each other really well, and that sets K State up for uh, good success, I would say, offensively. So that will do it for us today. For more on K State football and basketball, head over to kstateonline.com. Tons of recruiting stuff going on right now and coming in the near future with the transfer portal, both open for football and basketball. K State already lost Max Marsh on the football side. How big of a loss is that? Probably not, but it is something to be aware of that guys can leave, but more so um, they can also come to K-State, and that seems to be an area where K-State might get pretty active. So for Drew Galloway, I'm Mason Voth. Thanks for watching K-State Online.